disruptive is the social one. I mean, when social web came up, it sort of changed the way a lot exactly. of people were thinking. Exactly. Will the spatial be evolutionary, or will it be disruptive in your opinion? Uh, I think location will be... Um, it will be revolutionary. I don't know if it will be as revolutionary as social is, uh, because I think the two are really like tied together. So in, in a lot of ways, I think uh, the magic of location is unlocked when you mix it with social. And so uh, in so many ways, I, I think that uh, the two are two great tastes that taste great together. <laughs> and uh, so I, I think that, um, but it will be revolutionary in the sense that location is going to become a layer that, that really permeates every mobile experience we have, whether that's through an app or through um, mobile web, and it will almost be inseparable from uh, our experience on the web really over the next five to ten years. I mean, if I want to if I want to get a cab to come pick me up, you know, yeah. on my phone, it'll be, you know, getting that location layer that makes that possible. If I want to find a coffee shop nearby, or I want to see, you know, where my friends have visited, uh, all that's made possible, you know, through location. And the magic of what, uh, of what we're doing really hasn't even been unlocked yet. Now, we were just, just, we just talking a little bit earlier, you talked about how mobile devices have changed. Do you foresee a point in the near future where the mobile device, particularly in the, in the, uh, in the third world, an Android, of a small device, will actually bring us to a post-PC world where people actually never actually have a laptop or a PC? Is that coming to think? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's uh, an entire uh, a mass of people that will never you know, see a PC, even, even my daughter. So when I was four years old, um, my mom had a Radio Shack TRS-80 computer. It was, it was than me. <laughs> massive, massive, you know, uh, uh, computer. That was like top of the line yeah. for the day uh, that, that Tandy made. And and this is this, you know, iPad 2 is my four-year-old daughter's equivalent of the Radio Shack TRS-80. So when you when you think about it in that context, um, she's only going to know a mobile web, uh, uh, an internet that exists. You know, apart from a desktop computer, and I think anybody in, in a developing country or um, the the PCs may like literally may just be something that they they never you know see. And I think that's fantastic. Um, I think it's just going to open a completely new uh, new form of like interaction and connectivity between you know uh, people all around the world. One of the things we're observing a lot of is this mobile technology is reducing the price point at which people can go online. Yes. And we're thinking that we're going to see very rapidly with the emergence of the BRICS economy is a, glo a truly global internet where the United States and Western Europe market, first of all, becomes half very quickly and then becomes more in proportion to its population. Yes. We see, we track tweeting. We're seeing lots of tweeting coming from Lagos, lots of tweeting coming from São Paulo, lots of tweeting coming from Moscow. Yes. And are you seeing this also? I mean, maybe you have a time frame you're thinking that we might see a third world taking on uh, the United States in its uh, use of the internet? Uh, well, I, I think the other one, you know, is certainly China. And of course, they've been, uh, you know, uh, a little bit antagonistic at times towards the networks that we hold dear, like the, the Twitters and the Facebooks of the world. Uh, but that doesn't take into the account all the innovation that's going on, you know, in a country like China, where literally um, their their internet mobile using population is larger than the United States as a whole, and so a, a niche market in China is still bigger than the entire market. In the and they're on IP6 exactly. completely now. Yeah, yeah, We're, yeah. And so I think that does speak to the, the point that. Um, we are enter entering a day and age where there is going to be more and more innovation happening uh, in these other you know, geographies. Um, and I think localization is going to, want to become increasingly important. If you're, uh, if you're a company and you're, you're doing stuff on mobile or you're doing things around location, I think you have to be thinking about localization uh, early on in order to make sure that your app or your experience translates globally to these you know, emerging markets because otherwise you're cutting off you know, 
know, potentially a very large percentage of users, uh, and there's a chance that exists that they end up looking at your service and thinking, wow, that's great, let's build our own, but let's even make it better. And so um, I think that's that's going to be kind of, you know, increasing something you have to One of the things we also point out, too, is that uh, uh, digital natives, like your daughter, uh, quit take this stuff older than digital immigrants, people say be my age, <laughs> who had to be brought into this technology. Sure. And the thing is that while in the West, particularly here in Europe, we have a shortage of digital natives, the population is way to be old, particularly in countries like Egypt, we see a large population of digital natives. People who don't remember they're not being this, and they're, they're going to be starting to come forward. But like I say, I'd like you to talk, is there anything... Um, you want to say to the audience in the UK, well, we do put to a global audience, but anything particularly ideals you have about Europe, social spaces around Europe, you guys think about? So, uh, with Koala specifically, uh, 40 or 45% of our, our user base is international, and uh, a significant majority of that is here in, in Europe. So it's something we're paying attention to a lot more. Uh, now, we're a small company from Austin, Texas, and uh, it's exciting to us that so many people around the world have embraced you know, uh, what we've built. And literally, uh, people have checked in in every country in the world, over 3 million places now, and they've taken photos and they've shared their story, even like the demilitarized, you know, zone and uh, really? the Koreas has like photos that people have taken from the tunnels <laughs> and in. That sort of stuff is just really remarkable, and um, uh, I, I think for us, it's a reminder of, of, of how small you know our our world, my even my own personal world is. And one of the goals I think with the wallet it originally was to inspire people to go out and travel more. And, and in the U.S., fewer than 30 percent of the population has a passport. Yeah. And, um, and I understand that there are some people that either due to financial reasons or otherwise are, are unable to travel um, abroad, but there there's a host of folks who simply don't have a vision of, of, of cultures and uh, people who are doing amazing things around them. And I think that's one thing that we would really like to change with, with Koala. Can we inspire people to go out and explore the world, to see these new places and to engage uh, with other societies, uh, and see the world through uh, a, new, a new set of eyes, and um, hopefully that's something we achieve in this. I have a question. Um, how inspired were you by Lonely Planet and the history of Lonely Planet? Because they've been around quite a while. I think the, the inspiration of Lonely Planet has been uh, a little more recent as I've actually gotten to even know a couple people who, who, uh, who work on the team there. Uh, I've always had a had a respect and admiration for the brand. It's obviously very storied in space, um, but but as of late, it's certainly been something that um, I, I think we admire. Even the vision of the founders of Lonely Planet, kind of their the same ethos of like let's go out and see the world and, and explore it through uh, a new set of eyes. And so hopefully uh, we can kind of usher that same mentality into uh, a new you know, day and age. Okay, That's cool. great. Thank Just you. Tell oh. you our own. Well, you don't have to. Okay. Thank you. From our own.